Emily, you're coming with me now. No, no. You don't have any choice. You have done anything wrong. Imagine if you were abducted and held prisoner against your will. If you had your possessions taken, your hair cut, your clothing removed. If you were forced to wear a uniform and answer to a new name. For Gabriel O'Gorman, and for thousands of women in Ireland, this was a reality. At the age of 17, Gabriel was working at a Roman Catholic convent, looking after young children. But the nuns disapproved of her behaviour. I was working with the children in the convent, probably there about four months, and I think they thought that I was getting a bit um, wild, and I was going out with boys, and I was going out with a particular man that they didn't really like. We had a date, we went out, and I decided to stay the night. But they, when I went to the convent the next day, they had my case ready and with a policeman, and they said, Gabriel, we're taking you somewhere safe. The safe place was in fact one of the infamous Magdalene laundries, which were run by Roman Catholic religious orders in Ireland. Here, women they deemed sinners were sent, supposedly to earn forgiveness. It is estimated that at any one time during the 20th century, there were up to 1,000 women locked up in these laundries. Now Gabrielle is returning to the Dublin laundry for the first time since she was a teenager. It remained open until 1996, but is now derelict and hazardous, so she must wear safety gear. It feels really weird. It feels almost claustrophobic. You can hear the alarm thing going off. After all these years, just look at it. Dark, dingy, horrible. Oh. This is the room where I first came. The day I came in with all my stuff, my case, and the nun said, take off all your clothes, Gabriel. You wear this uniform. I said, no, I am not wearing that. And I was screaming and saying, I am not staying here. I want to get out now. But nobody listened. Kind of the feeling is really still there now. And I Eventually, they took me out into the laundry, and that's where I saw all the women working with the steam and the rollers, and I can feel the smell, the carbolic soap in particular. I immediately sat there, and I was crying. I thought, where am I? What, what am I doing here? There was girls in there as young as nine that maybe were attractive and they didn't want them to have boyfriends or they needed them for to be part of the, the laundry to work in as slaves. Most of the laundry was delivered by vans and it was usually from the local colleges, schools, hospitals. I, I remember seeing some of blood and that on, on the sheets. The women, they worked from six in the morning all day just doing the laundry, and they sang hymns as well while they worked. They never would be allowed to talk. And you'd always find the nuns walking about, making sure everybody was doing the work. It probably was 12, 13 hours a day. Then they'd have their meal, and they would go to bed. The nuns were very cruel and 
a lot of the women also became very aggressive towards each other because that was the environment. If you didn't do what you were told, you were punished. You'd have to do a public apology and you'd have to kiss the floor. Any time the nun would speak to us, she'd say, kneel down. If you didn't sort of toe the line, then they would really break your spirit and they wouldn't let up. They used to get us women to write maybe to your mother or a relative. I now know that those letters never went to the families. So you think, I haven't had a reply. You got that feeling of nobody wants you anyhow. Being here now, it gives me that real feeling of total isolation, abandonment. It's never actually left me because I've had always those nightmares going back and waking up thinking, oh, I'm there. All I wanted to do was get out but there was no way out. It was high walls, glass on the walls. It, it really was run like a prison. This here, that's what they would do if anybody came to the door, because they'd never open the door unless they knew who it was. And if they went through a door, it was always locked, locked. So you really got that feeling of being locked in. I had been planning to get away for six weeks. I watched when the drivers would come in every day, and I know it was about two o'clock, and then I said to my friend Joan, right, be ready, two o'clock, and we saw the door open, and I said, come on, charge, and we ran, and we ran, all the women were stopping me, but I just pushed anybody away, out of my way. Joan was behind me, I was saying, come on, come on, come on. My friend said, we'll go to my auntie. So we go to her auntie who lived nearby. And as soon as her auntie saw us, she gave us something to eat. And then she rang the police. The police came along, picked us up, and took us straight back to the Magdalens. Gabrielle was woken early the next morning and taken by two nuns to the much larger Good Shepherd Laundry in Limerick. Here they left her, promising she would only be there for a week. My first impressions of Limerick, truly awful. I had to wear the uniform then, and they said, you will no longer be called Gabriel, you will now be called Stella. I think you can become institutionalised very quickly. When your control is taken away, you've been given a different name, you're made to wear a uniform. They kept, they would, kept tricking, they would trick you. Say, well, if you do this, then after that, we'll let you go on Monday. Two and a half years later, still there, and always on the promise that they'd let me go. A lot of the women died in there. I know there was times where you'd see somebody and then you'd never see them again. And you'd say, oh, where is, say, Margaret or Mary? And they oh, she's very ill, she's in the infirmary. But it turns out now that they were just buried. They were just buried without a funeral or anything. After two and a half years, locked up against her will, Gabrielle was finally released. I really feel that Ireland and the church should hang their heads in shame. I hope now that the dreams that I used to have, not being able to get out, that now hopefully will go. If I was now 17 again, 
my advice would be don't let anybody take that control from you because it can affect your life.